It's Friday, March 5th, 2021, and like many of you, digging pretty deep into the uh, internet, watching various things, and I've been watching uh, some throwback uh, Thursday, uh, of course now it's Friday, and so I watched the 2016 uh, Olympic Marathon. I, for some reason, in 2016, I was busy with a lot of racing and crewing and pacing and all that kind of thing. But I did not watch any of the Rio Olympics, which was probably the first time in my entire life that I didn't watch Olympics. I've watched it since then, but for some reason, 2016, I completely skipped. I mean, I kind of heard about it, but I wasn't really paying attention. Um, so I watched the full marathon of the men's yes, uh, this morning, and now I got the uh, women's full marathon. So while I'm out here playing some poker, been uh, watching that and doing all the other types of things. And it kind of goes hand in hand with this article I just saw about J Japanese marathoning and how amazing it's been. This article is mainly on the men's marathoning. And um, I've talked about that on other videos about how they are so successful. And so last week they had this... Um, Bayamachi Marathon, the final edition of the Japanese oldest marathon. Marathon, and there was a 25-year-old Suzuki became the first American, American first Japanese to run a 204, uh, breaking away six kilometers ago to win 204.56. Out of 335 finishers, all but four Japanese, five men broke 207, 15 broke 208, 28 broke 209, and 42 broke 210. And 174 broke 220. And we were talking about how the Marathon Project had a handful, six or seven American break, break 210, who has a record. And this race was just pretty impressive. And in fact, they talk about, for respective sake, only 21 U.S. men have broken 210 in the marathon on a non-aided course. And that's talking about, like, not downhill. And there have been other deep marathons. Last December's Valencia Marathon had 30 people under 210. 1991 London Marathon saw 105 men under 220. Well, this race had 174 people under 220, and, you know, they had all those other people, 42 broke 210. So pretty impressive, and it's just uh, very uh, interesting to see. And, of course, some people would be, oh, it's the shoes, it's the shoes. Well, they talk about, you know, that over the years, Japanese have always had great uh, running tradition. Um, they uh, have the corporate system takes kids once they get out of high school college and has them competing and running and it says over the past 15 years uh half marathons have increased in popularity and in speed and so they had you know you know the past 15 years they went from 150 to 175 to even 250 runners under 106 and that's in different races with different fields so pretty impressive um like i said this article is mainly talking about the men and uh, the concentration of runners was, uh, you know, pretty deep, um, it says. But it says that like it was a fluke. Usually the men's talent pool stretched between at least four elite races in February and early March, and they did not have them. So late this race obviously was the first one. Um, between those four races last year, 31 Japanese base men went sub-210, 155 sub-220. Factor in the final running of the Lake Bawa, giving us extra appeal. The results this year weren't that different from last year, just a moderate progression, all concentrated in one place. It's definitely not the case that we're seeing a sudden explosion of the numbers. So the Japanese have been doing it, but in more races. And of course, you know, you're wearing the Nike Vaporfly, 4% and the next percent had an impact. Um, they've done quite a bit of studies, and uh, Dr. Helmut Winter published a study estimating the elite men's times have improved 1 minute 45 across the board since the induction of the shoes. Let's assume that progression year, and so let's say it's two minutes. So a two-minute adjustment uh, would be four guys in 208, uh, 10 in 209, 143 under 220, given past results. So it's definitely showing that they're going well. And then, of course, one of the reasons for their success, and I forgot to mention, like, the United States population is like 330 million in 2020, whereas the Japanese have 126 million, you know, million. So, you know, definitely have over twice as many Americans, but obviously the marathoning's not as big a focus. In fact, you'll notice, like, you often see, like, you know, we have some really great milers, 5,000, 10,000 runners. Very rarely do you see any fast milers or um, – 5k 10k guys in japan they do have some sprinters and do some pretty well like in speed skating, skating and things like that but you know their focus is definitely the half marathon because they have the icodins which i've talked about which have been going over for 100 years um they're shown over the past 30 years on national television and they have huge huge 
um, interest. And of course, there was also a lot of interest because the Olympics were supposed to be in Tokyo in 2020. And a marathon is one of those events that they can definitely do well in. And so obviously with the race being postponed to hopefully 2021, it says that over 65 million people, over half the population of Japan, watch these hackathons um, over the year of the past year. And so no wonder so many young men and women are interested in doing that. And that's definitely picked it up. Like I was mentioning before, they used to have this uh, team corporation teams and those did well, but you know, there was a rigid structure obviously in Japan. And so sometimes they didn't do as well as they could, but a lot of those athletes from those days are now coaching and the younger athletes and in interest and stuff. You know, and they've been known for doing the high mileage, but obviously the training in Japan has been changing over the years too. So you have a lot of uh, interest in the sport because of the relays, um, you know, the shoe technology, you have their system where even the high schoolers are doing these relays and the relays are like from 10K to half marathon with five or six athletes on each team. And then of course, with the Olympics coming up, they decided to throw a lot of money. And if you throw some money at the sport, that definitely seems to really change things. I think that's one of the reasons here in the United States, marathoning and running in general, though we think of it as really big, is not because the money, there's just not money in there. I mean, when you got athletes late the other day, you know, uh, it was great that they were doing some crowdsourcing for the money in the 10, the 10K race where a bunch of Americans qualified for the Olympics. But ultimately, the crowdfunding only got about $8,500, at least during the show. It might have got to 10. And they were splitting it between the men and women for just first place. So you're talking, you know, the winner was going to get $4,000 or so, four or $5,000. And well, you know, uh, Cranny ended up running her first 10K ever and moved up to number four on the list. And she only got four or five grand. What they did was they, the Jap Japanese corporate league sponsored bonus program called Project Exceed, they offered a million dollars for a national record, which one of the young men has done twice now. And in fact, the national world record, national record, and then nearly 100,000 for sub 206 and half that for 207. So 50 grand for a 207. And then they, of course, made the equivalent for um, the women as well. And it also says another 50% of those amounts for the coaches, if they worked in corporate leagues. Federation took an incredible, enormous gamble on setting up brand new single race Olympic trial format with integrated qualifications. So obviously, you know, you put some money towards it. And that's one of the reasons why you see and people off comment. But um, watching that 2016 Olympic marathon, Galen Rupp was up there and ran phenomenal, being the second marathon ever, getting that third place. But, you know, later stage of the race, he was surrounded by all East Africans, Ugandans, Kenyans, Ethiopians, and other East Africans who were running for other countries. And one of the reasons is because it's money, you know, to them, you know, 20 grand is a lot more than an American 20 grand. And so that, um, you know, definitely causes, makes a big type of thing. And then one of the things that I also thought was interesting is, and I've often talked about that here, and uh, the Newberry Park coach who just had a couple kids go sub nine in a 3200, and, you know, they just keep winning and winning. In 2019, they won the NXN National Cross Country Championships. And he often is quoted in the videos and in the intro of the videos, you know, 420 is just not that fast, you know, for a high school 1600. And what they also did besides throwing a bunch of money uh, towards uh, times and time bonuses, they also decided in Japan that three kilometers an hour, three kilometers, uh, three minute kilometers was going to be the norm for pacing. And that's 206 pace, no matter what, do or die. And so they basically just put in pacers at that 3K, uh, three minutes per kilometer. And he was like, hey, just hold on. And they were talking about some athletes who were around 210 athletes thinking, wow, you know, I'm never, there's not, that's a big jump, that four minutes. But you know what? They uh, ended up doing where, what usually happens. People stepped up and started doing that because that's what was expected. And now you have fairly large pack of guys running along at three minutes a kilometer and they just get pulled along and with that uh, peer pressure and you just have basically a train going along and doing what they need to get done. So these impressive results are basically uh, because you've got a massively popular broadcasting, attract young talent, effective college and post-collegiate development systems, support large numbers of them, large scale investment forming at home soil Olympics, role models to show that it can be done, widespread belief that it's doable, in the case of Lake Biwa, one race to bring them all in on a fast pace. And the shoes. No real secrets or surprises there, but it sincerely took a century to build, and it wouldn't be easy to replicate elsewhere. 
The big question is what happens after the summer. How about a pullback? How big a pullback will there be from uh, the, once the Olympics have happened? And that's definitely the case. This article was written by uh, Brett Larner. I'll put it in the show notes. And he's been writing about and living in Japan since 1997. He has some really excellent coverage there. So, you know, those are the things it takes to get the thing going. Um, we've had the Marathon Project, and we now have here in the United States quite a few teams training together. But even then, they were talking about on Let's Run that even the uh, teams, basically all sponsored by shoe companies, they only want so many Americans on the team because there's only three spots for most of the you know Olympics, World Championships. And so if you get more than a couple guys on the team, then it causes problems. So you basically want to bring in you know a few Americans and then a few Europeans and people like that to make your team but you're never going to bring a huge concentration of athletes so I think that the uh, f the relays that they have in Japan really help foster that uh, these large numbers of athletes crushing these times so one can only hope probably we will step up you know with the marathoning of course with the shoes everything now has been changed quite a bit so as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.